have listened to you carefully. And this is not a group that you ignore. It's a group of patriots reflecting the heart and aspiration of the society. I thank all of you for being here. I ask, face the challenge of this democracy, democracy and inherited this democracy from your struggles. I must recognize the fact that it is most required for good governance, a democracy. We have no other choice. And I believe that. I believe also that it's very difficult to manage. Yes, to the twists and turns of democratic governance. I want to assure all of you, as I listen to you, the two major reforms that we requested path to referendum and that should lead to constitutional measures that will fit our diversity and governance so we avoid conflicts and breakups. Yes, I'm from the school that will advocate for unity of this country. And I believe in it. I definitely want to assure you that whatever is necessary, I will put happiness and good governance and the head of all Nigerians. This is what I will do. I've listened to the past cries of constitutional reform. Yes, I've had your examples and a thoughtful presentation on this subject. Avoidance of chaos is necessary to build this country. I know I, I promised that uh, it was going to be a little bit torturous listening to him. Well, I mean, you still have to listen to him. 
we all heard what Emeka Anyaku and others, or Emeka Anyaku said on behalf of others. To avoid Nigeria from breaking up, it is ideal for Tifnumbu to quickly convene a constitutional, I mean, sorry, national constitutional conference where everybody can actually come this time, eh? not the one, well, I don't even know why we should expect anything from this anyway, because you know something. If you ask Steve Numbu to, con to convene national conference, okay, that means you will have to make sure that uh, no politician is part of it. So the process of participating, electing those that will participate and all of that represent the people should be the sole responsibility of the people, communities from different communities. No political uh, group or no politician and the rest of them should, should get any closer to it. You know what I mean? And that would be asking for too much because that's not gonna happen. That's what that simply means is that uh, if the constitutional conference comes out and say, okay, yeah, let us break up Nigeria. May Arewa the handle Arewa. May Biafra the handle Biafra. And let the Yorubas handle their affairs. Same for all other ethnic nationalities across uh, the place. And there is no more precedent of this or that controlling anybody anymore. It's just going to be a ceremonial. Then it's not going to do it. Obasanjo convened uh national conference in uh, 2005 it was to discuss all the divisions among nigerian uh, or the confederating units or the people there to kind of like figure out what they believe would be a constitution that will address their own concerns everybody's in every uh you know every unit uh, concern but Obasan just small good uh, third time into it. Third time. He wanted to be president for, for life. So they were sharing money, 50 million era per senator. 50 million era. I don't know if you remember all of that. And because the conference, when they gave their resolution, they, they just they rejected the third time. Obasan just got mad. He trashed the entire conference. He trashed the report. And today, Obasanjo himself is full of regret. That is if it's genuine. He's full of regret that uh, the successive uh, government after him, since he didn't build any institution, he did not sustain anything that could actually, that should have outlived him, right? No. So Nigeria continued to build powerful men instead of powerful institutions. And powerful men breeds tyranny. And today, Asking Tifnubu to convey one by politicians is just a nonsense to me. I mean, that's me. But here is Kolu's, uh, you know, other part of uh, what he said, okay? This is where he now really speaks more on the, not coherently though, right? But you could pick the pieces together. Where he now told them that he's now more, he's thinking. Is busy thinking on how to get your economy back on track before you will get to the issue of constitution and all of that. So let it be on record. Here is the other part of what he said. Our move is aspiration across the line for the benefit of all of us. I'm still preoccupied with thinking and tinkering with the economic reform. That's my first priority. Once I get that reform in place as soon as possible, then I look at other options. The option of uh, constitutional review, as recommended by you and other options, of uh, 
than it remains in this country. You should take into account the need for our nation to make progress. And I've seen many people that had been in the trenches with me. Fanu uh, Agabi, Labra Maku, and so and many of you here who be able to say you know me and you one way or the other we are related and we have a good history together and no matter how hard it was for me when I got your request to be here, I quickly look into it. We believe in Nigeria. That is what is paramount in your mind. But how will it be governed constitutionally, legitimately, without unnecessary aches and pain of its diversity? Needs to be addressed constitutionally. and build a nation that we can proudly say we will have a hand over a banner without saying to our children. I work on that. I may have to summon you again. to furnish and discuss further details of your rich background. As you present this to me, just believe that it is before these personalities. It is here to be reviewed, digested, and taken seriously. I want to say thank you very much for, for coming. I commit myself to the foresight and the belief that you want a stable Nigeria, a prosperous country, Nigeria. You never seen this guy abuse before. Turubu, I must abuse you. Turubu, number one, oh go up here, pa. Turubu, number two, oh go up here, ma. Turubu, number three, oh go up here, your children. Turubu, number four, oh go go bury all your family. Turubu is a god to you. Oh, a god to you. Turubu is a god to you. I don't read uh, social media anymore. <laughs> they abuse the hell out of me. <laughs> if I read it, I get high blood pressure. I get angry. I don't read it.
So, if I want to hear anything, my children or any of my workers will tell me, ah, this one say this one. To, you know, if I'm tired, I say, please. <laughs> Forget it. So yeah, that is uh, your demented uh, call. But you see, that dementia, you know, when you see a demented uh, drug lord, right? It is not compared to the kind of dementia that you see elsewhere because it's like, uh, you know, to them, it's like, um, you know, uh, uh, pleasure of... Uh, sort of a control is mostly about control and no matter how demented they maybe before the dementia get worse right or call you your demented they call you sat in that room spent a 15 minutes trying to respond to what these patriots even if you see the list of the patriots no wonder they have to push or a mechanical could have to be in the front. They say, oh, this one, is, this one has reputation. The other statement of Nigeria. But when you look at the contingent, you will see all of uh, the lackeys, the criminals that destroyed Nigeria in their own different capacity. Oshoba was among them. It was uh, They are the patriots. Anyway, what they were discussing, what they were demanding, or what they presented to call uh, or straightforward. But the way he was going about here and there, trying to see if he, because he's probably not, like, they're not talking in his, uh, on his own realm, so to say. Because as for Kolu, a chronic kleptomaniac, treasury looter, eh? somebody who wants to own the whole, the whole world. And to those who prayed, uh, sorry, to those who pushed that uh, the way he fixed Lagos, they want him to fix Nigeria. Right now, he has Nigeria on his hands. I mean, on his, uh, you know, in his hands now. Now, all he has to do is just to make sure that what he did in Lagos is done in Abuja, and it's been done. Dangote is screaming. He's screaming of sabotage every day. They continue to kind of, uh, you know, unleash a different uh, uh, propaganda against him. And I'm kind of feeling, you know, I, I want to start a feeling uh, for him. Seriously, I actually wanted to feel sorry for him, but I was like, feel sorry for who? Um, I mean, Dangote himself. But however, the Dangote refinery that they took uh, over $9 billion of Nigeria money to build, the same rogues, or, okay, sorry, different rogues, uh, one set of rogues robbed Nigerians under Bokowari. They gave uh, Dangote nearly $10 billion. You know, stood shorty or uh, yeah, stood as guarantor for him for all that loans too. Then I said, if Nigerian government couldn't really build and maintain refineries, and someone among them is building one, right? Sometimes, okay, even if you know the dark, uh, sort of the dark uh, secrets around this uh, enterprise, well, you can actually really see. You should see beyond, uh, you know, just at the dark side. You may be kind of seeing some other bigger picture, or you should see some other bigger picture. Listen, the problem of Nigeria, economically, that got escalated by the Bokuwari's government, right? One of them is that of a the subsidy. They robbed Nigerians. They spent uh, $1.5 billion on trying to refurbish the uh, one single refinery. So they robbed Nigerians so blind that if Nigeria says they are, okay, hang on, then they lie to Nigerians by saying, Shabi, you have seen that we've invested in uh, Dangote refinery. So very soon, Dangote refinery will fill in the, the gap of your local consumption. Me, I'm more concerned about what uh, life is for you economically in that place. And when I see these guys, right, who um, in their own uh, criminal uh, groups, right, come together to, to rob you without any remorse, that kind of robbers, I would say us, that kind of makes my own uh, blood uh, boils, right? 
I always lead to my own reactions most of the time. So, Bokwari and his gang, they were duping Nigerians on subsidy, cashing out big time, right? Then they also lying to Nigerians that they were renovating uh, their refineries, also duping them. Then they now told Nigerians that Dangote will break the market for them. And in fact, they had made a plan to give him, uh, what do you call it, to supply him a crude oil. A crude oil for his own refinery. And a lot of people were looking forward to that until they started hearing, in fact, the criminal uh, government of uh, Bukwari made the entire country believe that Dangote refinery was ready. So everything was sorted. So what was it that would be delaying Dangote from supplying uh, his refined crude oil to Nigeria? Well, it was kind of all lies, okay? The refinery was not fully ready. But people like us have had uh, the first hand information that it wasn't ready. But not being ready doesn't mean that part of it is not ready. To so those who have now explained better to us that refineries are built in phases, okay? So when it is fully completed, you can now say, okay, this is the full capacity. But before full capacity, there's still a fraction of uh, production that can still be done. Now that that is uh, explained, that means Dangote is the only one who has a working refinery in Nigeria that has the capacity to refine 45,000 to 50,000 barrels of crude oil, okay? Now, 45,000 to 50,000 barrels of crude oil every day who ordinarily, right, give Nigerian markets more than 15 million barrels of crude oil a month. I'm sorry, 15, uh, sorry, 15 million liters of uh, petrol and then uh, even probably equivalent of the same diesel. Now, if you have, if your country is importing about six, they claim that they, they are paying subsidy on 60 million barrel, I mean, 60 million liters of petrol. That's what they are paying a lot of money for. That's what they removed. Well, it's a lie. It didn't, okay? So if uh, you are, if you are importing 60 million uh, liters of petrol, and then you have a local production and others, it's not only that, there are other local smaller production, I mean, refining, uh, you know, they call them the artisanals or some, something, right? Who actually refine the crude oil locally in Nigeria, but small quantity. But if you put all these together and they are all kind of refining, are able to supply, out of 60 million, they are able to supply the entire country with, uh, let's say, 15 million uh, liters a month. That simply means that instead of paying subsidy on 60 million liters, you pay subsidy on 45 million liters, okay? So if it costs you 900 billion naira a month to subsidize 60 million liters of petrol, the Nigerians are still going to buy for 1,000 naira per liter, right? Because they believe that the subsidy is removed when it is not, okay? Now, you are someone who wish your country well, right? And the president of that country or those in government in that country now, you have a refinery that can give you 15 million. You don't, you're not going to import it. You don't even have to pay subsidy on it. All this landing costs, shipping this, shipping that. These refineries, these local ones, uh, these local refiners, you won't pay them that. Okay? All of that won't be an issue, right? So you save 15 million. So if you are spending 900 billion, 920 billion a month, you probably could be saving up to 300 or 250 billion. That's a lot of money. Do you know that? So rather than them possibly look into this that way, they just came out and told all of us that Angote Refinery is, the guy is it's not ready. And at the same time, even though he's, he's refining, uh, he has the capacity to refine 45,000, but he's, you know, his product is not really that good. It's not uh, of good quality. That wasn't coming from me. If me talk, you go say, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, you know, like that. You think because I don't like them. But this was this actually came from those who are supposed to be in government. If Numbu's appointee, Dan Gote's brother. He just dropped it like he thought. Oh, more Dan Gote was like, oh my God. Could you demarket a $20 billion uh, investment? The biggest you've ever had. The biggest of any investment in Nigeria. But even if not true, say, I don't get full capacity yet. Do you have to really go that far? Then we got to know that uh, 
because Steve Numbu and uh, his uh, supposed nephew, Wale Tinumbu, they've already floated another uh, refining, uh, a crude oil uh, refining or refinery in Malta. Nigeria used to import from import a refined crude from, I mean, sorry, import a refined product from Malta. But they stopped since 2021. So between 2021, hang on, between 2018 to 2021, the total money paid by Nigeria to this uh, refinery in Malta to supply Nigeria with uh, refined products. A total for three years was put at uh, under $300 million. Show to Yesha. Because there was actually a year that Nigeria only spent about $54 million. Then between May 2023 and May 2024, under Tifnumbu, Nigeria has imported over $2.1 billion worth of uh, refined crude and refined crude from Malta from the refinery linked to Tifnumbu. Over $2 billion in a year. Now you get to know why. Dangote is a coward, okay? I mean, look at uh, Elon Musk. You may not 